nonetheless matters that some literature professors say are very important. They are telling us that young people can't read. They come to university to do literature courses without having read much literature and unable, it seems, to do so even at university. The one for Atlantic magazine suggests in a piece out this week that many professors are noticing this trend. It isn't, of course, always the case, but it is too often the case for it to be dismissed. Sir so Jonathan Bate is Foundation Professor of Environmental Humanities at Arizona State University and Professor of English at Oxford as well. He's been telling me about his experiences as a teacher. I've been teaching in British and American universities for 40 years. And when I began in Cambridge, you could say to students, uh, this week it's Dickens, please read Great Expectations, David Copperfield and Bleak House. Now, instead of three novels in a week, many students will struggle to get through one novel in three weeks. Why? Well, a currently fashionable answer is that it's to do with the attrition of attention span due to smartphones, six minute YouTube videos and instant TikTok dopamine hits. And I guess that is part of the story in, in the last few years. But of course, it really does all begin in schools, doesn't it? You only have to look at the, the thinning of the GCSE and A-level syllabuses and the tendency to prescribe works because they're shorter. I, I think of it as the, uh, the John Steinbeck of mice and men effect. You know, they'd never prescribe the grapes of wrath anymore, but of mice and men is nice and short. I think there's one other factor, though, which is a, a kind of unintended consequence of the push in both elite British and American universities towards diversity and access. You know, the very desirable idea of getting in more students from disadvantaged backgrounds. But of course, those students come from disadvantaged schools where the teacher's main task is crowd control. Um, and so the demands in terms of reading long books just are not there. It was interesting that one professor quoted in this article in The Atlantic speaks of an attainment gap between public and privately educated students. And I would have to say when I was teaching at Oxford, that was my experience. What, those who had been educated in the state system in Britain were less able to engage? It's exactly, it? not less able to engage, very, very able students, but they simply hadn't been exposed to large numbers of long books, hadn't really developed, you know, that habit of concentrated lengthy reading, uh, which private schools in both the UK and, and, and the US still concentrate on. That, that said, I mean, I, it, I find it very interesting out here in the States, there is this phenomenon um, in a lot of charter schools. Charter schools are a bit like academy schools, they're state funded, but free to set their own syllabus. And there's a big revival within these schools of, of so-called classical education. So my teenager has just graduated out of a, a high school called Great Hearts. And there they read the Iliad, the Odyssey, Dante's Inferno, Shakespeare, Crime and Punishment. They even read Nietzsche and Hegel. My son came back from school one day saying, we had bagels in class. And I said, why? And he said, the teacher said, you're gonna have Hegel bagels because you've been reading Hegel and he's really difficult. So I'll reward you with bagels. Well, I couldn't understand Hegel when I was a graduate student. I'm amazed that 17 year old American kids are reading Hegel. So there is some hope. And for those who aren't doing those things, the longer term impact is what? I think the longer term impact is both very troubling for the future of a literary culture. If you haven't got readers, what are writers going to do? The intensive, thoughtful, quiet reading of great books is good for mental health. It's, it's very, very good for developing skills of concentration and critical thinking. And if that falls away, that is problematic for, for businesses, for society, for individuals. Sir Jonathan Bate, Foundation Professor of Environmental Humanities at Arizona State University, Professor of English at uh, the University of Oxford as well. Thank you so much.